Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic audio and video related products. Now recently I've been reviewing quite a few Fujifilm cameras, particularly the little compact cameras such as the XA5 and the XA10. It's worth taking a look at those videos. I really do love those little compact cameras, X mounts so I can change the lenses, so on and so forth. Great little cameras. Uh, but I was looking for another Fuji mounted or Fuji X mount camera. It is compact and I could use for traveling and going out and about with. I do normally take my Fujifilm XS20 I have here. This is actually really compact. It's got a great viewfinder, 26 megapixel sensor, a really, really nice grip, nice handling camera. I've got the Sigma 18 to 50 lens mounted to that at the moment. Um, and I really do like that combination. And I wanted something that I could take along, either along with this or instead of this. So what I went for is the new uh, Fujifilm X-T50. Now the X-T50 is a really, really superb little compact camera. It hasn't got the same size grip as what the XS20 has got. That's got a really big meaty grip because it's got the bigger battery in it. The X-T50 is a very compact camera, but it's got the W126S battery in, uh, which is basically one of their older batteries. But it's great for me because the XA5 and the XA10 take the same batteries. So I've got plenty of batteries for the X-T50, um, but the grip is a little bit smaller. Small rig do make an additional grip that you can put on the bottom. I've tried that and I find that it's too tight for the lenses, even the real compact lenses, I mean knuckles rub up against the lens. So I'm quite happy with this grip. It has actually got a, a sort of a curved edge around the actual body of the camera. So it's quite, you know, it's quite nice. You can see it there looking at down on it. You can see there's quite a curve to the uh, grip, which is uh, really, really nice. And that does help with gripping it. I have put the small rig shutter release button on the top, this little red um, thing that goes on the top of the um, uh, shutter release, but um, yeah, that's the camera without it. Now, the X-T50 is apparently the replacement to the X-T30 Mark II. Uh, I still believe Fujifilm are actually selling the X-T30 Mark II as well as the X-T50. So I don't think it is a replacement. I think it's an addition to the range. Um, this fits slightly below the, probably the X-S20, but certainly the X-T5. The X-T5 is the pro version, really. It's a, a more expensive, but it has got two card slots. It's got a bigger grip, a bigger battery. Uh, so if you are doing professional work, then I would think the X-T xt 5 would probably be a better bet but the xt 50 for me is ideal it has only got the one card slot it is a uhs2 card slot and it fits in with where the battery goes in the battery compartment i don't like that idea but you know it is what it is um the sd card does slide in there um along with a battery now uh it has got your fairly traditional uh, Fuji uh, controls on the top here. I say fairly traditional because on the this one here, which was a command dial, it was your drive dial where you set your, uh, whether you're shooting a panorama or uh, burst shooting, uh, just your still shooting and what have you. But they replaced it now with uh, a, a dedicated dial for setting your film simulations. Um, that to me, I think is, is great if you're into just shooting JPEGs. I don't, I shoot raw. Well, I shoot raw and JPEG. So I tend not to really use this dial at all. I just leave it set in standard because the raw images will always be of the highest quality anyway. I and mean, then you can edit them uh, afterwards. But what I am going to experiment with is setting this up to either black and white or one of the other ones. So I can have all the JPEGs that'll be black and white and then all the raw files that I can edit. So I've got the benefit of both. And I think that would be quite interesting to see how well that works out. I am gonna go through some of the images on my computer here. I would strongly suggest you take a look at them on Flickr. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of this video where you can find them on Flickr. It'd be much better you looking at them there and studying them on this video because of YouTube's compression. And also, I'm not gonna go through them in any detail on here. Um, it has got the three inch screen. Uh, it's, it's actually a tilty wilty screen as opposed to an articulating screen. Now, that, I, I love that. And for me, doing photography when I'm out and about, I've said this in all my videos, I prefer the tilty wilty screen. It's more discreet, 
and I feel like I'm not going to snap the screen off with it folded out. But where I was on my XS20, which has the articulating screen, that is great for here in the studio uh, because I can just slide the screen out and then I can actually see myself, I can see what I'm doing um, and every, you know, uh, everything works really well. So this is more of a video orientated camera than what the X-T50 is uh, from, you know, from that standpoint but they haven't skimped on the video features that are in the camera. And I'm gonna go through those in just a moment. And there is a separate video about the video features of this camera. So um, it is very well specced as far as video is concerned, but it hasn't got the articulating screen. So it isn't really a vlogging camera. You can put a, mount, you can put a monitor on the top, obviously, but that kind of defeats the object of having a nice compact camera. Um, you can use a Fuji app as well. I think that has got remote, remote shooting capabilities on the app but again it's an extra piece of kit and you also got to sync the app to the camera and I find that a bit fiddly so I'm using this primarily as a stills camera but I will use it as a video camera in the studio because I will connect it to an external monitor so uh, the controls on the top um, are fairly standard for Fuji apart from this dedicated uh, dial for your film simulations they only work in JPEG by the way uh, you can still shoot RAW and JPEG, as I said earlier. So you get the benefits of editing in RAW, but you can get JPEG straight out of the camera if you want to hand them to someone, upload them to your social media and what have you. Now, on this side, you've got your shutter command dial, so um, you can set your shutter speed. You can also set it, set it with the command dial on the back here, so you've got a choice of two. Um, exposure compensation. What I've done with exposure compensation, I've set it to, to C, which means I can then use this back dial for my exposure compensation. The only reason I've done that is because all my other cameras, including my Canons, um, I use the back command dial for exposure compensation and the front dial for adjusting your shutter speed or your aperture, depending on what mode that I'm in. And I wanted this to be the same, otherwise my memory will forget um, that I have got an exposure compensation dial, you know. Um, so that's all I've done there. Uh, so it's got command dials on the front, it's recessed, so you don't accidentally knock them either, which is really nice. So you've got your front command dial, you've got your back command dial, um, obviously it's shutter release. It's a threaded shutter release. And again, I think that's harping back to the old days. And that's really nice. You can, put, you can screw in a conventional threaded shutter release. And that's what I've put this little uh, small rig button. You can't, you're never going to be able to see it. But this little red small rig, I uh, can't even hold it. This little red small rig button I've put on the shutter release just to make it look a bit prettier, really. Um, and doesn't have much other function. Uh, there are function buttons on the camera. There's one on the top here. You can assign for whatever you want. Uh, you can also assign, there's four swipe, they're not function buttons, they're on the screen. So you can set a, uh, functions on the screen to do what you want because it hasn't got function buttons. Set it up on the screen. Like on this, if I swipe that way, that'll bring up the larger, um, you see at the bottom there, uh, the display information. That makes it larger if I swipe or smaller. So you can go from one or the other. You can set up uh, zebra settings for video. Uh, you can use it for setting your mic levels. So there's all sort of things you can do uh, with that. Um, it's got 425 focus points, which doesn't sound a lot these days, but to be fair, it's pretty good. It's actually really good. It's got many different autofocus modes. So you've got your trains, planes, automobiles, uh, people, humans, and what have you. I think it is great so you can set it up uh, how you want to set that up. Uh, face and eye detect, obviously, which is pretty much the same as what all cameras do these days. Um, I've got it up in the Q menu. There's one on the side here, it says Q, um, and that brings up the quick menu. Now we're in video at the moment, so it's only brought up a row of six. And you can see I've got set up there, 5600 Kelvin for the white balance, uh, manual shutter speed, aperture, um, the ISO is set manually. So it's great because you can go into that and set that manually, uh, you know, for your video settings. Uh, but uh, let's go into photos mode. Now, the, there isn't a dedicated video photo switch on here, which there is on the, well, the XS20, it's on the mode dial, the PASM dial. So you just turn the PASM dial to video. Um, with the XS, uh, with the uh, XS50, 
there isn't a PASM dial, so you have to go into video via the, um, and what do we call it? The drive mode, the drive mode. So you go into your drive mode here. Let's go out of a quick menu first. So you go into your drive mode and you see there's a whole range of things on there from panorama, stills and what have you. And it's on video. You see it's highlighted video at the moment. So you go out of video and then you go into still at the top there. Um, yeah, a little bit more fiddly as a hybrid camera. As I said, that's why I'm using it primarily as a photo camera, but when I want to do video, I just set it up for video. So it's not a big deal. It's only a big deal if you want to quickly switch between photo and video. If you're out and about and you want to very quickly switch, it's not so quick with this camera. Although you can pre-assign one of these function buttons. I did actually pre-assign this button at the top here initially. And when you click on that, it takes you straight into video. But unfortunately, it actually starts recording as well. So it doesn't just take you into a video mode, it'll actually start recording video. Um, I, I turned that off, I've set it to something else because I didn't want it to do that. Uh, I found that was a bit weird really, but um, I guess if you are a hybrid shooter and you are out and about and you want to be able to very quickly switch to video, you can do that, uh, but it's, uh, I find it a bit weird. Um, and it's got, as I say, the three inch screen. Uh, it's touch screen, obviously. So you can actually move your focus point just by touching the focus point, touch to focus. Uh, you can also look through the viewfinder and move your focus point. Uh, looking through the viewfinder, you can drag your thumb across the screen and the focus point will move. I find that, not, that doesn't work as well as it does on my Canon and certainly not as well as it did on my Sony because my nose is touching the screen and that's stopping my finger from moving the focus point. You can set it to just be a quarter of a screen or half a screen, but I still find that my nose seems to stop that from working. So if anybody has got a solution to that, that would be really, really helpful. Uh, but I haven't found a solution to that uh, as yet. Um, it has got a built-in flash. I don't use flash, but it has got a built-in flash. It isn't bounceable either, which is a little bit annoying. Um, it is. It is what it is. You can't bounce it up and bounce it off the ceiling. But at least there is a built-in flash if you, you know, that's something that you want to use. It's not something that I use. Um, and uh, that's the, basically the outside of a camera. It has got your joystick. So a lot of people find it very useful. Go through the menu using a joystick as well as uh, moving your focus point uh, using the joystick. You can see there that the focus point is moving as I move that. Um, so that's great that they've put a joystick on a, you know, uh, uh, on this camera because it is a travel camera. I, was, I didn't think they would put a joystick on it because of the size of a camera, but they have. And I think that is, that is really, really nifty. Now, one of my favorite parts of this camera, as far as tra a travel camera is concerned, is this little switch here, which switches it to full auto. Now, I use full auto a lot now. Uh, on this camera. I didn't on the X-T20 and the X-T10. Um, I can't remember about the, the original X-T30 because with those cameras, when you switched it to auto, it would only shoot JPEGs. It wouldn't do RAW. And I found that so frustrating when I handed this to my fiance to take photographs. Uh, all the images that came back were all just JPEGs. Now, they've obviously listened to the consumer um, I assume they've listened to the consumer. I like to think that's what they've done. Uh, it now does JPEG and RAW. So you still have the ability to edit the images uh, and it's on full auto is brilliant because it sets your shutter speed, your aperture. It doesn't matter where these controls are. Um, you just literally put it in full, full auto, but you can still adjust the exposure compensation in full, full auto. Uh, and also you can still move a focus point in full auto. So I think that is uh, great as well. And the other wonderful thing with full auto is it sets the uh, subject detection to full auto. So if it sees an animal, it will select that mode. If it sees a human, it will select, uh, select human. And I detect um, a moving object, it will change to that moving object. That's great. But annoyingly, full auto, as far as the focus is concerned, doesn't work in aperture or shutter priority. You have to manually select whether you want human detect or whether you want it to detect, you know, uh, an item, you know, a car or an animal or whatever. Please, Fuji, do a firmware update so I can use full auto focus in other modes, not just the full auto mode. Um, but yeah, nice little feature of that. 
The build quality is phenomenal. It's beautiful. I really like it. I think the, the silver looks really sexy. I chose silver because that's what they had in stock. There was no other logical reason for choosing silver. But I think it looks really sexy. And the screen is flush with the back of the body. And you don't really realise that at first. But when you start to use it, you think that is really flush. That is, everything just works really, really well. It has got your ports on the side here. So you have got your USB-C port, you've got your HDMI port, and you've got a mic jack. And it has got a headphone jack, but that is via the USB-C port. So just bear that in mind. It does come with a USB-C dongle uh, to adapt it from USB-C to a 3.5 mil headphone jack. So you can use your conventional headphones with it, but just be careful you don't lose the dongle because otherwise you're not going to be able to use it for monitoring audio when you're doing video recording. The USB-C port uh, is multifunctional. It will do data transfer, but it also has power delivery, which is the same as on my X-H2 and my X-S20. So um, that is awesome, but you can use power delivery. And that is great for video, obviously, because of a small battery. Um, uh, the battery would run out if you didn't have some form of power delivery. There is no video record limit. And it has 10-bit recording modes in here as well as the 8-bit modes. It's got 4K, uh, 6.2K. Um, it's got all the other video codecs, which will be explained in my other video. So it is a really, really capable video camera. Um, but I, as I said, I won't be using it necessarily as a video camera. As far as the film simulations, you can use those in video as well. And it has got the Eterna profile, which is a really nice sort of, it's not quite flat profile, but it's a really nice profile, straight out of camera, if you're not really into color grading. Uh, so, you know, fantastic. Uh, and as I say, really, really nice and compact. The fan that fits the XS20 and the XH2 doesn't fit this camera for video though. So if you do want to do long form video, you may find this camera will overheat. I've not managed to get it to overheat, uh, but you may well find that it will overheat. Uh, and the reason why the fan won't fit is because of the construction of the actual uh, screen on the back. So um, yeah, just be conscious of that. It has up to seven stops of image stabilization for photographs. I think that is really, really nice, particularly if you're using lenses that don't have any image stabilization in them. I mean, this lens does, this is the kit lens. Um, and I'm actually quite surprised how good this kit lens is with the X-T50. Bearing in mind, the X-T50 has got the, fifth, uh, sorry, the 40 megapixel sensor inside it, which is the same as the X-H2 and the X-T5. Also, the X100 Mark VI. Um, and I'm surprised how good this lens is, actually, with uh, this particular camera. Um, as I said, we'll go through some of the images in just a moment. But yeah, it's got seven, up to seven stops of image stabilization in the body of this camera, even, even though it's a really, really compact camera. There is uh, IBIS inside the camera. The viewfinder is pretty much the same as the one on the X-S20, so it's not a really high resolution viewfinder. Unlike the X-H2, which has the 5.7K viewfinder, that is beautiful. It's large and it's sharp and it's outstanding. This one gets the job done and it's absolutely fine. Uh, the eye relief is really good with this, uh, much better than I found on my Sony A6700. That was a really small viewfinder. This one's much larger with a decent magnification in here. So it's great if you are using the viewfinder a lot for either viewing the photographs or taking photographs out in sunlight. Um, so yeah, pretty decent viewfinder in this camera. The burst rate on this camera is pretty decent as well. It's eight frames a second in mechanical shutter, which doesn't sound a lot, but for your general use, it is. I mean, I wouldn't buy it as a sports camera or as a wildlife camera per se, but if you are doing some sports or some wildlife, you'll find this is fine. But in electronic shutter, it's up to 20 frames a second, which is phenomenal. But just bearing in mind, you will get rolling shutter if you're doing lots of pans or if you're following the subject, uh, you know, following the subject, you will find the background may well, you know, be a bit uh, uh, jelloey. So just bear that in mind. So let's take a look at some of the images now taken with the X-T50 using various lenses, even including this 15 to 45 kit lens. Um, and, you know, they've come out really good. Now, as I say, take a look at them on Flickr rather than here, because I'm only going to spin through them here. Um, if we look at some that I took out and about rather than in the garden, 
uh, let's uh, just click on anything. You can see the colors are really good that come off this sensor. Um, and because it's a 40 megapixel sensor, it's easy to crop in. If you do want to crop in any of the images, uh, you can do that without any, any trouble whatsoever. Um, and still get a really, really nice sharp image. I mean, that's 100%, so that's probably cropped in far tighter than you would need to do so. Uh, but uh, yeah, colors, I think mean, colors are very vivid. And these all shot in auto. So I've just literally left the camera in auto and snapped away as I've walked, uh, you know, walked around the town. And that's what I like to be able to do, rather than concentrating or worrying about the camera settings. I just want to take photographs. And being in auto, I can be very discreet. And I've left the camera pick its autofocus point. And it's done a really good job. It really has done a really good job of picking where, you know, the autofocus should be. Love this camera. I, I love its handling. The fact it has a 40 megapixel sensor is a Brucey bonus. I always was concerned that either the file size were gonna to be too large for a computer to handle, or it would take up too much space on the memory card. But memory cards are pretty cheap these days. So I don't see that as being an issue whatsoever. So a number of years ago, memory cards were expensive, so um, it would have been an issue, but not now, you know. And the fact that it is really nice and compact, I keep saying it's nice and compact, but it is. But leaving it in auto, um, great for me, flick it to auto and you know away you go and if you do want to you know select two apertures because you do want that creamy bokeh then just put it back to manual then you can set your apertures either using the command dial on the front um, or if the lens has got an aperture ring uh, such as um, the lens on my X-H2 that has an aperture ring, which most Fuji cameras, uh, Fuji lenses do. So I can control the aperture using the uh, uh, aperture ring on the lens. That's a quick look at the Fujifilm X-T50, not in any great detail. Don't forget to take a look at my other video about more about the video features uh, of the X-T50. I haven't covered that very much in this video at all. Um, but yeah, the X-T50. Well, uh, my favourite little travel camera now, absolutely without a doubt. There we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did like it, please hit the like button. That does help me grow the channel. Would really, really appreciate that. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. That would be great as well, because there's always more content coming up about camera gear, audio gear, uh, podcasting gear, so on and so forth. Cheers for now. Thanks very much. Bye.